Now that our control arm tubes are finished, it's time to make the end bushings for the cross shafts. And what we've done is set up a stop so that we can repeatedly make the same cut over and over and over again without having to measure each bushing before each cut. Once we've finished cutting all of our bushings to a rough cut size, we have to go and put them in the lathe to machine the edges down and to get them to the exact size that we need. We just put them in the lathe, chuck them in, and face off the rough cut. Now we have a dial indicator set up on the machine so that we know exactly how much to remove off of each side so that in the final end it's down to the one thousandth of an inch. Once the bushings are all machined and face down to size, we need to remove this mill scale, this brown finish that comes on pretty much all DOM tubing. And the reason that we get rid of that mill scale is so that when we TIG weld uh, the control arm tube to this piece, it doesn't undercut or cause any type of porosity. The way we do that is we use this old South Bend lathe here that we've set up just for polishing bushing ends. And we use a piece of emery cloth just to, just to remove that there. The stick comes off really, really quick. Gives it a nice silver finish. Perfect for welding tubes. Nice and shiny. Alright, now it's time for the fun part. Getting it all welded up. Our tubes are complete, our bushings are machined, and our ball joint plate is prepped. This is cut out of 3 8 P&O steel, which P&O is a really nice material to TIG to. Uh, we've got the ends bent up so that it flows with the shape of the control arm, and we've got the edges all nice and smoothened over. All we have to do now is put it in the jig and get it tacked up. Now we're only going to tack up the, the two tubular pieces to the ball joint plate. We'll then take it out of the jig, weld that up and let it cool, and we'll come back to the jig after this is all set and tack weld the bushing ends on. done. Ball joint plate is tacked to the two arms. Now we'll go ahead and get it welded out. Okay, we're about ready to weld out this one arm. What we're going to do first is we're going to weld the ends on all four sides and then we'll come back and weld the complete underside. Let it cool and then we'll weld the top side. Front two ends capped off. Now we'll do the insides. One down, five to go. There you have it. 
one side of an S10 control arm welded up. This is one hot motherfucker. We'll let it cool down, and we'll come back and we'll wire wheel the scale off that forms from the heat, and then we'll weld this side up, let it cool, and then weld the bushing ends on. Okay, we've got the control arm pretty much welded up except for the bushing ends. Now we've got the plate 100% welded, top and bottom. Now uh, we've got the bushing set to the jig. We're going to put the arm back in there. Then we will tack weld the bushings onto the tubes and then take it out of the jig and weld it up. Now the bushing ends are all tacked up on the arm, and we'll go ahead and get them burned in 100%, and then we'll be ready for assembly. Okay, we've got the ends welded on the inside and the out. Now we'll just go ahead and finish welding around the top and bottom of the tube. One Thorbeck Brothers upper control arm. Welded out 100%. Uh, as you notice, we do TIG weld all the joints on these control arms just because it's a much stronger, prettier weld. While our control arms are cooling down, I'd like to take a minute and show you the cross shafts that we use. What we have here is a piece of inch and a half round stock that's been CNC machined. We've turned the edges down to accept our polyurethane bushings. We've machined flats on the edges to accept the washer. It's our lock washer, and what that does is that keeps the bolt from backing out as the suspension is moving and the control arm is going up and down. We've cut our name into it, and we've installed a grease feature here that, uh, that accepts a zerk fitting on the top of the shaft in two locations, left and right, and when you push grease down into that, fit, in that zerk fitting, it actually forces grease down and over and up through this hole which is underneath the polyurethane bushing and when the suspension is moving up and down that spreads that grease throughout and keeps it lubricated and squeak free. Okay, these control arms are finished. The cross shafts and the ball joints are installed. Uh, these arms are now ready to ship out to one lucky customer. Hopefully they'll enjoy them uh, as much as we've enjoyed building them. Uh, as you saw in the video, it is very time consuming to produce these. There's a lot of steps involved in actually uh, getting to the finished product. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video and uh, actually learned a little, little something about the uh, manufacturing process and, and the steps involved along the way. Thanks for watching.